Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In this video, let's take a look at the Fling2 router from GLINet, product code GLMT6000. Fling2 is a high-performance Wi-Fi 6 router that offers ultra-fast 2.5 Qubit Ethernet connectivity and low latency 6000 Mbps Wi-Fi 6 throughput in total. The Fling2 router is a slick and compact device that comes with two 2.5 Qubit Ethernet ports, four 1 Gigabit Ethernet port, and a USB 3.0 port. The router supports dual band Wi-Fi 6 with up to 1148 Mbps on the 2.4 GHz band and 4804 Mbps on the 5 GHz band. According to GLINet, it can handle up to 256 devices simultaneously and has a coverage range up to 3000 square feet. The heart of the Fling2 GLMT6000 is the MediaTek VLogix 830 SoC, which features a quad-core 64-bit CPU running at 2.0 GHz. Besides, two 2.5 Gbit Ethernet interface, hardware oscillators and wireless chip, the MT7976GN, MT7976AN are also integrated. In addition to that, the device also comes with 1GB of GDR4 RAM and 8GB of eMMC storage, providing space for file storage and packet installations. One of the main features of the Fling2 routers is its VPN performance. It supports Wygod, OpenVPN, and Tor, and can achieve up to 9000 Mbps Wygod VPN throughput. This means you can enjoy a secure and private browsing, streaming or gaming without sacrificing the speed. It can also be used for a side-to-side -side VPN connection between two GLINet routers or between a GLINet router and an OpenWRT router. The router also had a built-in ad blocker which is at got home and a firewall to protect you from malicious websites and ads. The Fling2 router runs a customized version of OpenWRT23, which gives you full controls and flexibility over your network settings. You can access the web interface or the mobile app to configure your router, update the firmware, monitor the traffic, and more. You can also use the GeoINet cloud service to remotely manage your router from anywhere. Besides, you can still configure the GLINet 2 via the Lucy web interface in case you miss it. You may wonder what is inside the box. Well, let's find out now. As always, we have the user menu, followed by a thank you card. And then, they are 12V 4M power supply with universal power plugs. The internet cable is also included. Finally, the most important thing, the Fling2 router GLMT6000. Let's take a closer look at it. Setup the Fling2 is simple and straightforward. In this setup, I have a 2.5 gigabit internet media converter it is connected to the ISP via fiber cable. Let's connect the media converter to the 2.5 Qubit Ethernet 1 port on the Fling2 and then connect the power cable to turn on the device. The LED blinking indicates that the router is up and running but no internet connection is available. Let's connect to its Wi-Fi address ID to set up. The Wi-Fi address ID will start with GLMT6000 and the password is printed at the label on the bottom of the Fling2. Once the phone is connected to the Wi-Fi network, let's open the web browser and visit 192.168.a.1 to proceed. Here, you can select the language, fill in a strong password to accept the web dashboard. By default, the one interface is in the HCP client, 
I'm going to change it to PPPoE. Fill in the username and password to establish the network connection. Very good, there is an active IPv4 and IPv6 public IP address from the ISP. If the connection is not successful, you may need to check the VLAN setting. Now, I will run a quick speed test to see if the internet connection is working fine. Now the Fling 2 GLMT6000 is connected to my PC via the 2.5 Gigabit Ethernet port and we can see that the network connection is 2.5 Gbps. So let's log in to the web dashboard and as usual this will be the root password that you have set up at the initial boot. So after the first login, the system will check for the firmware update and it will prop you like this. So in this case, I'm going to proceed with the firmware upgrade and after that, we are going to have a PoE speed check as well as the CPU users. Alright, so let's click the upgrade button and wait for it. In order to update the firmware over the air, you will need to have a working internet connection. And in this case, because we had configured PPPoE on the first boot up, so everything works as expected. It's looked like the upgrade is completed, and now let's log back in. Very good, the PoE connection is initializing. So let's go to system and go to overview section to have a quick check. All right, so right here we can see that the OpenWRT version is 23.05 snapshot and the kernel version is 5.15.139. Let's go back to the third tab, which is the internet and let's see if the connection is up. Not yet, still connecting. So let's be patient. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the web dashboard. So this is the web dashboard of the GL INET Fling 2 or GLMT6000. At the first page or the home page, you will have an overview of the network connection or the internet connection. And you can easily configure Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. You can use this as a dual one or you can configure one at the one port and the other one as a LAN port. All right, so we also have repeater, tethering and cellular connection right here if it is connected. Down below, we have the wireless tab where you can configure your 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi and you can also enable the get Wi-Fi as well. Next on the clients, you can see the connected devices. For example, this is my PC, it is connected via Ethernet and we can see this icon. So if the device is connected via Wi-Fi, we can see this icon, whether 2.4 or 5 GHz. On VPN, we can easily enable and configure OpenVPN, Wi-Gut VPN and even Tor. Alright, so the configuration for VPN is very simple and basically it is just red and drop. So, if you are beginner to OpenWRT or beginner to GLINet or beginner to the VPN world, you can easily drag and drop your configuration. On application, we have plugin where you can manage all the plugin or the packages. We also have dynamic DNS, good cloud DNS, network storage if you have some USB storage device connected to the USB port. You can also have add got home to enable some of the S blocking function as well as protection. Parent controls was integrated as well. We also have zero tie VPN and tell scale. So a lot of cool features were built into this Fling 2 router. On the network, we have firewall. You can configure port forwarding easily by click the add button and Basically, this is a simplified version of the web interface for OpenWRT. So even though 
the GLI net routers is based on OpenLittleRT, but they have redo the whole UI to make it simplifier so that beginner can easily configure the firewall just like you are doing with a normal router. So port forward, open port on router, DMZ, we have multi one which already automatically configure. We have LAN, we can change the IP address for the LAN easily as well as the DHCP server. Guest network, DNS, all right, it's a lot of things. Encrypted DNS, manual DNS, DNS proxy, network mode, routers, or set points, or extenders, or WDS, and a lot of things. All right, so this one you can also clone your MAC address if the ISP authorize the connection using MAC address. Rob in gateway, IGME snooping, network isolation and that settings and a lot of great things were integrated. Well, so the GLINet Fling 2 had a lot of improvement compared to the GLINet the Fling, the first version that we reviewed one or two years ago. We can see that a lot of change. We have four cores, we have memory users, we have the LED control, we have built-in flash storage which is 8 gigabytes we have and once you get used to GLI net router you can go to schedule tasks to run your program in a certain times or in a time interval we can also configure the time zone take a look at the logs or security to change the passwords and enable the local access control if you wish and also, if you want to reset the device, you can delete all and reboot. And finally, if you miss the Lucy web interface, you can always go to this one, click on here to access the Lucy. However, please note that there are some functions which will not really work in Lucy. So please check carefully before you apply any changes on the Lucy web interface if you are using GLI Net router. All right, so we see that the internet connection is up and running. So let's go back to here. We can see that it's got PPOE. We have IPv4 address and gateway and things like that. So just now, we didn't have an IPv6. So let me enable that as well. All right, so apply. So I assume that after I click this button, the IPv6 interface should be automatically enabled. Let's wait for that. No internet connection via network to reconnect. All right, very well. So Ethernet 1 is now the one port. Ethernet 2 is using at LAN. And yes, let's perform a speed test. So this is the PBE speed test with the Fling 2 or the GLMT6000. And just now, as we take a look, the network isolations were enabled with hardware isolation and the NAS settings is disabled by default. So I don't touch anything on the isolation part. Right here, we have edge top and top to see the CPU users in general and the CPU users of the single cores. So let's start the test and let's check it out. All right, we are running at 1,135 MPPS with the CPU at 99% idle and let's check the upload speed test. So the same for upload, I have 918 MPPS upload with the CPU at 99% idle. Let's change to another server and take a look. Very good, we are having more or less the same speed, 1069 MPPS for download with just 1% CPU load, it's very cool to see. So after this, we are going to disable the hardware isolation and let's take another check. All right, so let's go back to the web UI, go to network isolation and turn it off. 
So we can see that network acceleration reduces CPU load and speed up the traffic, but it conflicts with some features. So when the network acceleration is enabled, the following functions will not work properly: client and speed, and traffic statistics, client speed limit, and parent control. So let's disable that and take another look. So let's go. So after disable the network acceleration, we can see that the download speed reduced to 450 Mbps while the upload speed is 822 Mbps. Let's change to another server and take a look. So just now we are using the Viettel IDC, so let's run using the same server and let's check it out. So for download, we only have 476 MPPS with the CPU at 82, or just now it is 68% idle. So it's worth around, it's worth around 32% CPU load. And for upload, we are having 900 MPPS with the CPU load is just around 20%. So we can see that by turning off the hardware isolation, the CPU reduced by at least 50%. So we may need to sacrifice some of the features such as pairing controls and traffic limit to achieve the full gigabit or maybe 2.5 gigabit throughput. All right, so that's where the speed with Ethernet. So how about wireless connection? Let's take a look right now. And before doing that, I'm going to enable back the network isolation hit apply. Alright, so let's go to the wallet connection and here I have the Wi-Fi connection up and running. But before we do that, let's go to the wireless connection and make sure that alright, we are running on 160 megahertz. And yes, it is. So that is good. So let's go to the wireless connection and connect to it. Connected. So now I'm going to disable the Ethernet connection and we are only connected via Wi Fi. Alright, so you can see here for the wallet connection, we have the link speed of 2402 Mbps. It's the same for receive and transmit. Alright, so it is Wi Fi 6A02.11ax and we have the network band is 5 GHz. Very good, let's run the speed test using the same server we did previously. So over the Wi-Fi, we have 936 Mbps download. Oh, and let's wait for the upload. For upload, we have 842 Mbps. That is a good result to see over the Wi-Fi connection. Let's open the task managers and let's go to performance so that we can see the Wi-Fi interface. All right, so you can see that I'm using the Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX210, 160 megahertz. So let's run the speed test again and let's check it out. So we can see that the download speed is 929 Mbps and the upload speed is 834 Mbps. So this may not be the highest speed because we are using the internet connection for the test. Later on, we will have another local throughput test with IPUB trees as well as open speed test to fully measure the maximum throughput that the Flink 2 can offer. So far, we have already took a look at the Flink 2 router from GLINet. In the next video, we will have further testings such as one to one throughput test, open VPN and Wi-Got VPN test. We will also check out the NAT throughput with a USB 3.0 disk and more. That is all for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.